Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are our Lord. You alone are our Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit. In the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Grant us, O Lord, to trust in you with all our hearts. For as you always resist the proud who confide in their own strength, so you never forsake those who make their boast of your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. First reading today is from Isaiah. Say to those who are of a fearful heart, be strong, do not fear. Here is your God. He will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For waters shall break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool, and the thirsty ground springs of water. Where the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 146. Hallelujah. Praise, praise the, the Lord, Lord my, soul. my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. Put not your trust in rulers nor in any child of earth, for there is no help in them. When they breathe their last, they return to earth, and in that day their thoughts perish. Happy are they who have the God of Jacob for their help, whose hope is in the word of their God, who made heaven and earth, the seas and all that is in them, who keeps his promise forever, who gives justice to those who are oppressed and food to those who hunger. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord cares for the stranger. He sustains the orphan and widow, but frustrates the way of the wicked. The Lord shall reign forever. Your God, O Zion, throughout all generations. Hallelujah. Second reading comes from James. My brothers and sisters, do you with your acts of favoritism really believe in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ. For if a person with gold rings and in fine clothes comes into your assembly, and if a poor person in dirty clothes also comes in, 
And if you take notice of the one wearing the fine clothes and say, have a seat here, please. While to the one who is poor, you say, stand there or sit at my feet. Have you not made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brothers and sisters, has not God chosen the poor in the world to be rich in faith and to be heirs of the kingdom that he has promised to those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor. It is not the rich who oppress you. It is not they who drag you into court. Is it not they who blaspheme the excellent name that was invoked over you? You do well if you really fulfill the royal law according to the scripture. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you show partiality, you commit sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. For whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become accountable for all of it. For the one who said, you shall not commit adultery, also said, you shall not murder. Now, if you do not commit adultery, but if you murder, you have become a transgressor of the law. So speak and so act, and those who are to be judged by the law of liberty. For judgment will be without mercy to anyone who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith, but do not have works? Can faith save you? If a brother or sister is naked and lacks daily food, and one of you says to them, Go in peace, keep warm, and eat your fill. And yet you do not supply their bodily needs. What is the good of that? So faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus Christ, according to St. Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. From there, Jesus set out and went away to the region of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know he was there. Yet he could not escape notice. But a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit immediately heard about him. And she came and bowed down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile of Syrophoenician origin. She begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. He said to her, let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he said to her, for saying that, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. So she went home, found the child lying on the bed, and the demon gone. Jesus returned from the region of Tyre and went by way of Sidon towards the Sea of Galilee in the region of the Decapolis. They brought to him a deaf man who had an impediment in his speech, and they begged him to lay his hand on him. He took him aside in private, away from the crowd, and put his fingers into his ears, and he spat and touched his tongue. Then looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Ephipheta, that is, be opened. And immediately his ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. Then Jesus ordered them to tell no one. But the more he ordered them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. They were astounded beyond measure, saying, He has done everything well. He even makes the deaf to hear and the mute. 
to speak. The Gospel of the Lord. Once, a poor farmer died and went to heaven. When he reached the gates, he was seated next to a man who was obviously rich. In a few moments, St. Peter opened the gates and invited the rich man to enter. The farmer peeked through the gates as the two walked into the Golden City. What he saw amazed him. A chorus of angels greeted St. Peter and the rich man with a rousing Bach chorale, and people filled the streets shouting. When the noise died down, St. Peter gave a short speech and concluded by saying, Welcome to the city of God. Make yourself at home. As the rich man walked down the street, people continued to shout and wave. When it was quiet, St. Peter opened the gates and beckoned to the poor farmer. Though he was greeted warmly, there was no angel chorus or great crowds to cheer him. Welcome to the city of God, St. Peter said enthusiastically. Make yourself at home. The farmer was deeply hurt. This is the last place I ever thought I would find discrimination, he said to St. Peter. All my life, I have watched the rich gain privileges that the poor were denied. I thought that when I came to the home of God, all would be equal. Yet when I enter the gates, I am not greeted by either crowds or choruses. My dear friend, St. Peter said, I can see how it appears that there is discrimination. But it is not true. Everything will be the same for you as for the rich man. You have to understand that today is a special occasion. We receive poor farmers up here every day, but we haven't had a rich man for over 80 years. <laughs> Just as there is no discrimination in the city of God, so there is to be no discrimination in the house of God. Our second reading is quite clear about that. The letter of James exhorts us to treat all people without bias. If a person with gold rings and in fine clothes comes into your assembly, and if a poor person in dirty clothes also comes in, and if you take notice of the one wearing the fine clothes and say, have a seat here, while to the one who is poor you say, stand there or sit at my feet, have you not made distinctions among yourselves? 
and become judges with thoughts. James wants his readers to be doers of the gospel and not just hearers. If one only listens to God's word, one can easily forget it. But if one puts God's work into practice, it becomes who you are. The truly wise, truly faithful person is known not by what he or she professes, but in how belief is shown by action. When Charles Evans Hughes was appointed Chief Justice of the United States Supreme Court in 1930, he moved, of course, to Washington. But he transferred his membership to a Baptist church there. His father had been a Baptist minister. It was the custom in that Baptist church to have all new members come forward during the morning service and be introduced to the congregation. On this particular Sunday, the first to be called was a Chinese laundryman by the name of Ah Sing, who had moved to the capital from San Francisco and kept a laundry near the church. Ah Sing came forward and he stood at the far side of the pulpit. As other names were called, they took positions at the extreme opposite side. When a dozen people had been gathered, Ah Sing was still standing alone. Then Chief Justice Hughes was called to come forward. And as you might guess, he walked forward and he walked over and stood next to the laundryman. With that one action, Justice Hughes revealed himself as a doer and not simply a hearer of the gospel. We are to show no favoritism as we profess our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Everyone has a claim upon God's mercy and goodness. Everyone stands in need of the love of God in Christ. In the gospel, there is a welcome for the person who has none to welcome him or her. The gospel sets a value on the person whom the world regards as valueless. You see, the ground is level at the foot of the cross. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith but do not have works? Can faith save you? 
If a brother or sister is naked and lacks daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm, and eat your fill, and yet you do not supply their bodily needs, what is the good of that? So faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. There was a man who attended a church that prided itself on its ability to appeal to the educated sensibilities of the residents of a university town. On one occasion, this man found himself at a potluck supper at the church. He was seated next to another man whom he had seen around the church, but had never met. In conversation, the man was informed by his new neighbor that he had been a member of the church for years. In fact, he said, I'm the only non-intellectual left in this congregation. You're kidding, the man said. No, I'm not. I haven't understood a sermon that has been preached here in 25 years. But I'll tell you one thing. I'd never leave this church. When asked why, the old timer related that for several years, every Monday night, he and a few others had been taking the church van to a nearby prison for youthful offenders. Sometimes we play ball with the kids, he said. Sometimes we have a little Bible study. Most of all, we just get to know them as people. I started doing this because Christians are supposed to do things like that. But now I find that I get a lot from it myself. There was a pause. Then this new acquaintance added, I have found that you can't prove the promises of God in advance. But if you live them, you find they're true, every one. The promises of God are true. And not only will we come to know this, the more we live them, but so will others.
We believe in one God, our uh, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten of the God of the one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and was made a man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all those whose lives are close, closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles, and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that they may, be, that they may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the church, for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Jeff, our bishop, Sandy and Becky, our wardens, Jessica, Phil, Connie, Jim, Deanna, and Pat, our vestry and clerk. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the province of the Episcopal Church of Sudan. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for St. Christopher's River Hills. In our community, for all the Burlington area churches, Love Inc., the Transitional Living Center, the Women's Resource Center, the Diocesan Hospitality Center. For those suffering from war, especially in Afghanistan, and those suffering from nat natural disasters, especially in Haiti, California, Louisiana, and Mississippi and from the economic crisis in our world. We pray for those who are our enemies, those in the armed forces, and especially those deployed. In our parish cycle of prayer, we pray for John and Lynn O'Brien and Pidge Peters, for those celebrating birthdays, Jim McCann and the Reverend Loretta Mendoza, for those celebrating an anniversary, the birth of a child, preparing for the birth of a child, preparing for baptism, and preparing for marriage. For those who are in need, Eileen Allen, John Ames, 
Jane Clothier, Don and Marion Cook, Marilyn Johnson, Betty Lorenzi, Mary Nichols, Marilyn Nitka, Pitch Peters, Ken Porter, Lana Ramsey, Estelle Serena, David Toretta, Jimmy and Tommy Yanni. And we pray for those who have died. Let us pray for those suffering from natural disasters, domestic and foreign violence, and the pandemic and its effects. Let us pray for nations and peoples as they strive to do better and to be better. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church. And give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins for our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good <clears throat> and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you. Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, for you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross, <clears throat> and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ is died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and ending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us of all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God.
<clears throat> Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have led us to spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now to the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. And thanks be to God.